Sergey Lavrov, Russia's Minister of External Affairs, visiting Africa. And in the past six months, he has visited 12 African countries. What does this mean for Russia and Africa? Mr. Lavrov is really busy right now in, in Africa. He's visiting Africa more often than he probably visits his own family in Russia, right? <laughs> Welcome to the Ren Experience, where we celebrate those making a difference in our times and inspire you to do the same. To achieve that, we have been analyzing our data and realize that 93% of our audience haven't yet subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy our content and find value, kindly do me a favor by subscribing to the channel. Your subscription helps us grow and gives us the power to bring you the guests that you want to see on the show. Hey, Thomas, thank you for joining me on the show today. Thank you so much for having me here. So on my last episode, I hosted Gerard Horn, and one of the topics that we discussed was uh, Sergei Lavrov's Russia's Minister of External Affairs visit in Africa. And in the past six months, he has visited 12 African countries. What does this mean for Russia and Africa? Mr. Lavrov is really busy right now in, in Africa. He's visiting Africa more often than he probably visits his own family in Russia, right? <laughs> um, but he's not there. It's not the only one uh, that get interested. We remember also that Biden organized a big African uh, uh, USA summit in uh, in Washington, where that was society successful. Pre- French President Macron was also visiting uh, Ivory Coast and Cameroon uh, in the last six months. So Biden, um, the the Secretary of State, uh, similar Lavrov in the USA. He's also visiting like a lot of African continent and proposing like a lot of new deals. So there's definitely a a huge interest for uh, African support right now of, of foreign powers, right? Uh, it's important we, we, we note that. But for Russia, why now? Listen, uh, Russia, what, what's interesting with Russia is, do you know like uh, how big is Russia? Do you have any idea of how big Russia is? It's the I... biggest country in the world, right? It is literally the biggest country in the world. So no one else is bigger than that. What does it mean concretely? is that Russia have a slightly different interest than other economic power, right? Um, because Russia actually have a lot of minerals. Russia do not need petrol. Russia do not need gas. Russia do not need... Um, they need to export some of their productions, and Africa is definitely an interesting market for them, but really Russia don't need the minerals the same way the French or the Chinese uh, uh, has that interest, right? What Russia is, is busy doing is trying to, is trying to show a new model um, to the world, right? So they're trying to say to African countries, look, with what's happening in that in that democracy in in Western Europe, democracy, it can be good for Western Europeans, but it's not good for everyone, right? They they come with authoritarian regime and they come with security practice. So what they've done is they mainly like supported like the security questions. They didn't really look much at minerals, even if we know that obviously some Russian company would be involved in deals and things like this. But they really look at the security. How do you securize like a president, one political regime, right? So now you have a certain amount of African president that found that security uh, things uh, have an interest into into trying to secure their border, into trying to fight some rebels or into those type of things. So we're thinking, for instance, of country like Central Africa, um, for which like all the presidential guard is literally made by uh, Russians and the group Wagner, right, the infamous a military group. That means concretely that it's Russia protecting the, the president, right? Is it good? Is it bad? Um, we can we can debate, but definitely it has, a, it has an influence on how to conduce businesses in Central Africa. But also it means that other power cannot play the president anymore, right? So if the French don't like the guy, they can't kick him out the way they, they want it, right? So they, the way they could have done that before. So, so it's really the security question. Now, if you go north and you go to the Sahel and the Sahara, you realize that Mali is in trouble uh, with northern uh, jihadist group. Um, same for Burkina Faso, same for Niger, same for Nigeria, and that those countries are in need of in need of security. They need some security, and uh, if if Russia can come with some sort of like solution, key solutions, uh, they will they will take it. If Russia says, no, we can we can do what the French didn't do, or we can do what the United Nations failed to do, trust us, then they will they will they will try, right? But we also need to look at the other perspective. What are the Russians looking in Africa? What are the Russians looking in securing like African powers that way? Um that's that's a, a larger question that Africans should ask uh, themselves. Um do we want security? Is that security more important? Is it that security that will bring economic progress? 
Um, should we deal with China that is way more interested in our economics, right? We know that Chinese are here for, for, for business and, and maybe like uh, the young generation should be now, we, we want to do business, we don't, have to, we don't have to do that. And I think the last question is, how do we, how do we um, play those power from the African continent? How do we play them against each other in order to gain advantage, right? And how can we make sure that right now, because Russia is here, we can raise the price of doing business with America, or or, or you can renegotiate some the trade agreement with America, uh, those type of things. Um, we also know, maybe last point, uh, that all all those uh, all those foreign powers um, are really fluid and flexible. Right now, Russia is ready into coming back to Africa, but it's it's connected to the Ukraine war. What if they lose the war tomorrow? If they lose the war tomorrow, maybe they won't be interested anymore into fighting in Africa, right? Uh, what if they win the war? Maybe they will think like they they, they will gain even more uh, more support on the African region, right? Um, I say that especially in the light of what's happening with China. You know, Renatus, we have talked a lot in the new podcast also of, of Chinese influence in Africa and Chinese trying to do businesses. Chinese is, is the factory of the world, right? So when they bring uh, when when they bring businesses, they need they need materials, so they they can assemble things, but they need the material to come to to China. So, so Chinese, China, since the COVID, is way, way less interested into investing in African businesses. He is uh, way more interested into recovering from the COVID uh, impact. It's way more interested. Yeah, he has abandoned several projects. Um, in Uganda, for instance, Uganda, there were a big like, a trade, um, a trade corridor that was supposed to uh, bring Kampala to, to Mombasa. And the Chinese were supposed to finance it. And uh, slowly but surely, I've, I've decided to 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 slow it down let's say right which pushed Museveni the president of Uganda to decide like to move with uh, with the Turkish because the Turkish are also absolutely on the race on the continent and they have a long history of of, uh, of presence especially in North Africa and Egypt um, but so you see like the, the question is is really how do we play how do we use that particular moment when world powers needs Africa a lot to actually play them against each other and, and raise our capacity and, and raise our own political agenda so Taki has also shown a lot of interest in Africa. Same with the Chinese, massive investments across the continent. And now Russia is coming in. What does this mean for Biden and the US? It's 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 complicated, but like the Amer- Americans still have like strong old powers, especially in the Great Lake region. We know that uh, Uganda, Rwanda, and Congo are highly dependent on, on, on the US. Um, but globally, globally, Africa. Africa wasn't at the center of, of U.S. interests, and, and, and U.S. diplomatic interest is, is really on, on China and the war, the economic war against China. Um, so when, when the, the last five years of, of, uh, of, of international relations with the U.S., because when you think of diplomacy, you need to think a bit further from the president, right? Those are like administration, like Lavrov is there since a long time. Those are administration that stay for long, so they establish like relationship with with countries, you can't change your minister every two days, and, and he comes to the country, and, and you have to discover him, right? So it's, it's definitely for 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 Biden, um, the, the American administration is more interested right now into uh, fighting China, and now that China is less in Africa, they would they the interest for African would, would be decreasing, but they also have an interest into counter the narrative of Russia, right? Because Russia come not only with soldiers uh, of the Wagner Group, so mercenaries. It also comes with huge amount of disinformation, right? So we know that Russia is a strong power to disinform. They use a lot of social platforms. So in the U.S. for the last election, they used to uh, have a Facebook page of Black Lives Matters and Facebook page of um, white supremacists, right? So they would fuel those type of conflicts. So the, the Russia is really trying to say something that a lot of people believe, and if maybe you in in, uh, in Rwanda as well, um, that a strong authoritarian power is more efficient to bring development to the people than democracy. And that human rights, democracy, um, those, those type of notions, right, are Western and do not apply everywhere in the world. And Russia is the counter example of that. And Russia tried to bring large coalitions around this idea. Um, so Chinese are obviously uh, supporting a, a similar idea. And they try to build, to, to build a counter narrative, right? So we know that Americans have been involved in the last 30 years to 40 years to develop democracy, to try to uh, help activists that ask for elections, and, 
and and they they really pushing that democratic agenda also with international institutions that like the IMF and the World Bank they, they push for democracy. But as, as, here in Africa, we should ask ourselves: like, is that democracy working for us or not? Um, is is Kagame model more efficient than South African model for development, for instance? Right? Um, is the one party state more efficient than than democracy? So yeah, if we look at the Americans' uh, narrative in the region, is is being highly highly uh, uh, countered and diminished by by Russian uh, intervention. Lavrov just arrived in Mauritania this morning. And then China's new foreign minister, King Gang, got off an early start visiting Ethiopia, Gabon, Angola, Benin, and Egypt two weeks ago. And the United States Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, is on a tour to Senegal, Zambia, and South Africa. What is it? What's going on in the African continent right now such that everyone wants to be in the continent and they're making all these <laughs> visits all of a sudden? No, they they have an interest. They have an interest into uh, making sure that if all Africa, for instance, for instance, voted against like Russia and Ukraine for the war uh, or in United Nations vote, it would have a, a huge impact on the on the war itself. It will isolate uh, Russia uh, much more, and it will help European unions and and the Americans to uh, develop trade trade roads and and infrastructures and things like this that would that will uh, serve their interests on the continent. Um, we should not be naive um, when when those power comes in. They have an interest. The only question we should ask ourselves is what is our interest? What is our interest right now as, as Africans? Is it that the, the the conflict in Sahara stops? Is it to reframe the borders? Do we need new borders like Russia is doing in Ukraine, like imposing its own borders uh, because our current border system don't don't function? Um, do we need to attract investment from anyone, whoever? Um, in order to emulate some some good business ground and let entrepreneurs, African entrepreneurs, lead, lead a wave of of, a, of development uh, from private business sectors, that's that's the question we need to we need to answer ourselves. And and, and depending on on, on those answers, um, then we establish an agenda, a diplomatic agenda, to to front those power and to say to those power, hey guys, here is what we need. We need investors. Okay, are you coming with money? Yes or no? If you come with money, do we have a do we have a way to retain that money in the country? Are you going to develop some skill for our people? Like those are the largest uh, largest question uh, we should we should ask ourselves. Until we don't have a, a, a global political agenda as Africa as a as a Pan African continent, they will be strong. They will be able to play us. If you think of the size of Russia, US, it's it's always smaller than Africa, but it's one. Lavrov visit 12 African countries. When last have you seen a minister of foreign affairs, an African minister of foreign affairs visiting 12 countries in six months? They don't. Welcome to the RAN experience where we celebrate those making a difference in our times and inspire you to do the same. To achieve that, we have been analyzing our data and realized that 93% of our audience haven't yet subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy our content and find value, kindly do me a favor by subscribing to the channel. Your subscription helps us grow and gives us the power to bring you the guests that you want to see on the show.